what has been the response like abroad? Like because we generally tend to think that uh, you know India is very rooted in culture and uh, the kind of uh, music that we encourage and kind of uh, especially for Carnatic music. How has been the response there? Excellent. See, culture is uh, a word which uh, applies to the local places. There's local culture. So, Guru is a highly uh, cultural place. And then uh, uh, the response has been very good and they welcome all genres of music and the collaborations. Uh, there is no, not a dull concept where I had a negative response or no response. Everything has been positive. You give good content, content is taken, that's it. <laughs> yeah. So you specialize in global fusion music, right? That's your forte. So play, but playing the Western uh, classical music and uh, Carnatic uh, require different kind of techniques, right? Yes. So how do you manage that? Yeah, this no, now I'm very much home play, playing these types. But when I was practicing, like um, um, I started learning violin from the age of five, and I gave my first concert at the age of nine. Then when I accompanied Dr. Balamuli Krishna, I was fifteen years of age, and then I heard this "How to Name It" album of Ilai Raja, where in on one single violin, uh, uh, without changing the tuning, all pitches were played. So that really captivated me. What is this technique? Where because in, in Carnatic music, for each pitch you have one violin. So if I'm going to play five different pitches, I need to have five minutes. Mm -hmm. So this was not the thing. So it, it had only one. So that uh, I started exploring and then I found out that I have to learn Western classical. Violin is a European instrument and it had to travel from the West to East to get adapted to Indian music. So then I started learning from Bangalore School of Music and then from B.S. Narsiman who had actually played uh, How to Name It for Indian Raja and, and uh, that uh, uh, gave me a different, uh, uh, what to say, uh, uh, vision of the violin. Like uh, the techniques of the left hand bowing where you, you get a clarity playing, smooth playing, all, all these, you know, in fact, even those techniques if you can adapt to Carnatic music, it will be very good. So, it, at a point of time, there will be confusion, a lot of confusion between the two systems because here you tune to Sapa Sapa, that is E A D G, which is Sapa Rida. So, you think of Sa, it comes, it re comes up. You can't think of Pa Dha comes up. So, the only way to overcome is extensive practice of both systems. Extensive practice. That's the only way. If, if, they, if you can't do that uh, enormous amount of practice of the two systems, it, it will turn out to be a disaster. If you can do it, then fine. Great, you will enjoy it. <laughs> so between Karnataka and Hindustani, which one is more popular in the international market? I feel Hindustani is more. I can say with, with respect to Europe, um, not even classical music is more popular. Okay. And what kind of music is popular in India? India, it's regional, I have seen. See, film music is everywhere. Yeah. Otherwise, in South, if you, if you see even in Karnataka, half of Karnataka South is Carnatic music. Then mostly it is Hindustani music. But then you go down South, Kerala, it's again Carnatic music. So we, we have this film common factor plus the regional music there. Yeah. Yeah. So how is it performing with uh, Balmuri Krishna? Uh, I, I did a lot of com concerts later, uh, mostly about some 70, 80 concerts I was accompanying with. And then the first concert, I was really young and then the president of Gayan Samaj said she's capable of playing and uh, I was I was bored actually. I, I, I had no stage fear at any point of time and so but then um, uh, I was a little bit skeptical. Okay, I, I am capable of playing, I want to play, I'm passionate about playing but will he accept? Like, yeah. But then when he saw me and then he was so warm and he treated me so nicely on stage but he, there was there were no concessions. When it came to challenges and difficulty of playing, there were no concessions for me and I responded for everything. And he liked it very much. He said, I, I was so bold for the first time playing and then I travelled a lot with him. I played lots of concerts. In fact, my festival, London International Arts Festival in London 2012 was inaugurated by him. I brought him to Iraq. Awesome. So this apart, what has been your most memorable concert with you know that you have performed so far? Yeah, the one with London Philharmonic Orchestra at the Wembley Stadium. That was for ninety thousand people. I told you that Prime Minister Modi came to play there. So that was very 
memorable because you know that amount of audience where will you get to play <laughs> and, and the piece which was my own composition mm. indian spring mm. uh, which uh, a world class orchestra uh, philharmonic orchestra like the national philharmonic LPO, they played. that was very and, uh, and then the other one was at the Buckingham Palace and I met the Queen for the inauguration of the Commonwealth uh, heads. But I, I'm actually saying, you know, when I go and play now, I'm playing Ramanami concert in Ramanathpuram, which is a small uh, village on the river uh, banks of Kaveri River. So the concert starts there at 9 9 30 in the night and it will go until 1 am, 2 am. Mm -hmm. And there are small children who put the talam and sit. But when, when I say no, I feel so happy to play for such audiences, our own audiences. So each one is an experience, I can say. Yeah. Yeah. And also you were talking about how challenging it is. I mean, particularly, you know, abroad where you have a, a very harsh climate, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it requires like you have yeah. to play. How, how do you manage that? See, most of it will be indoor. Very rarely you won't, in the winter, go and play in a stadium. <laughs> it's, it never happens usually. Yeah. Otherwise, yes, I've played in, I've, I've traveled to extreme weather. It's like in Sweden, there is a place called uh, Pitya Lulia and Pitya is the top, topmost. Near the Arctic uh, uh, belt, so there, like it was like uh, minus twenty or so in winter. So it, it was in a uh, theater, but you know the transport to go all that. Uh, but the heating systems are quite good, and then yes, it's it's quite. I like traveling and playing in different places to different audiences. Okay, so tell us about your work in movies. Movies did just happen like that. Um, I, I did not have any, yeah, I, I started uh, playing Western classical, but I did not have any idea that I'm going to play for movies. So one fine day, some some um, manager called me saying that you were, I, someone gave me your film for it's in Prasad Studios Bangalore. It's for a movie uh, direction by music direction by Rajan Nagana. They were very good. Yeah. So uh, then I was excited. But then uh, we were not sure of movies, no films, how we, you know, traditional families. Then my father said, I'll also come. But they, they did not discourage. Well, let's see. So he was there and he was very much convinced. It was a really safe and nice atmosphere. And then it started from there. So how is it working for Vigilay Rajan? Oh, that, that was uh, an experience, a learning experience, I should say. That was for this Kannada movie called Ray Maraga and uh, where it was violin focused. And uh, I, I was very excited. It was nice, really nice. What's his working style like? He is one man factory, it's a university. He does the uh, uh, melodies by himself, he arranges it, and then uh, I think he does like four to five people but put together one man does. But I played maximum for Hamsalika. He uh, was very leading. But now also I've been playing now, see this every movie has one music director. You come go, like but they're they're all good, all are good. But I think everyone is getting opportunities. So I enjoy, that is a different kind of music. I do enjoy playing that. In fact, in my closing shows, sometimes I do play a film, popular memory. Some of the themes on violin sounds so good. The yeah. People would like to listen to it. <laughs> you see, you've, uh, I mean, you've uh, achieved so much in music. But then, uh, you know, you, you're, you're also a gold medalist. And then uh, you've done your uh, medicine. Yeah. Uh, how did you, and of course your son certified, uh, yeah, uh, Java. <laughs> Java professional you are. So uh, I mean, you have like, you've gone like so many hats and why did you actually take your music? Uh, music was always there. Music came in first before medicine. Then in you not know, 12th PUC, what we call in Karnataka, yeah. I got 7th and 1st. And I got good, uh, I don't know, luckily or unluckily. But uh, <laughs> I got it and, and I uh, uh, in Bangalore Medical College to get married seat, it's very good. It's very hard BMC, one, yes. uh, BMC one in 20, 30 you have to get. So I, I, I enjoyed that one also and I did my post graduation. I did practice for a few years. Not the, I did justice, but the music was calling. And at a point of time, especially when I moved to London, I found that I can't uh, um, have my leg in two different boats. I have to choose between medicine, music, family. I can't live, give up family. I can't give up music. So the one to go out was medicine. But then again, I've been on and off into medicine. Like pandemic, I did practice because there were there, there were uh, there was a huge shortage for doctors. Yeah. I did. So it's not that I'm totally out of medicine. On and off, I'm. Like, I enjoy both. 
Yeah, but didn't you think that it's a very lucrative uh, profession, you know? Yes. yes. And the music, uh, if you com- comparatively. Yes, yes, hundred uh, percent. As a consultant, and many people thought that I'm very, I'm mad to uh, take this up, yeah. such a high-paying profession. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, sometimes you know you should follow your heart than what the society says. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> It is any creative industry, I tell you, not only music. Uh, people who take creative, uh, uh, creativity as their profession, they would have undergone a lot of challenges, including a lot of no's in the family. Oh, why you have to go for some safe profession like engineering? Yeah. That would absolutely happen. But tell me, if, if everyone says that, what happens to creativity? So <laughs> You have to take risks. Yeah, yeah, hmm. that's true. And yeah, I mean, you've come this far, so that is an achievement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's there like all these reality shows, you know, uh, inviting people on stage to sing and all that. So one question is, what happens to those kids who actually uh, win those shows? And do uh, there are not many shows or even dance schools like we were mentioning earlier. I mean, schools, uh, music, dedicated music mm. schools, which can actually promote, you know, professional music. Mm. I suppose a kid is really into music mm. and uh, he or she doesn't want to actually study. You know, they want to completely get into music it, and get yeah, yeah. serious about music. Mm. So, do you think it's high time that we actually had something yes, like that? 100%. See, in UK there is this a Yahudi Melanin School for strings, violin, any string to it. But they also have the curriculum, academic curriculum. So, at, at, at 10th standard, we take music as a major subject and at 11th and 12th, you have more of music and very serious training. So that means you have academics and also music to high standards. That has not yet come in India. And also it's the mindset of the people. Playing safe. What, do, what will you do? How, how will you make a living in music? What if it fails? Go for safer professions. So I think the same thing should be with even journalism. Right? Yeah, true, true. Yeah, yeah any creative industry, they will... Uh, and there are patients, uh, lots of uh, people who are patiently doing this. And then they have been successful. Whether you are successful or not, that is secondary. Do your passion. That's what I would say. Money is secondary. If you are destined to get money, you will get. Otherwise, no. But at least be happy of doing what you want. Yeah, <laughs> satisfaction is satisfaction. Yeah, if you are very passionate about something, you should just pursue. Yes. Then uh, um, my, my husband, uh, he said, he just see, one day he said, put up the computer when we were newly married. Um, actually, I had to go and say shut down to the computer. But I went to the main switch and put it off. <laughs> so he said, I realized so dumb I was. And then he said, No, you go for the basic thing. And then from there, it started C, C, then uh, Java. And I was the first doctor in the world to do sun certification in Java. And I worked in Tata Consultancy Services, TCS, as a healthcare IT consultant. So that was for three years before I went to UK. But somehow, Yes, that gave money, all that was there. But I felt that the subject was very dry. It was like if a medical person, no? biological su- subjects, no? and nothing against that. But it was not for me. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are people, lots of people doing it. But I'm not proud for that. And also for this creative people, you know, sitting in one place from 9 to 10 o'clock, uh, it's, 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 it was not for me. So I, I don't want to do things that I don't like. That's it. <laughs> so tell us about your upcoming projects my up- upcoming projects one of them is Shakti which I have been touring in Europe no? that's uh, tunes composed during lockdown it's electronic music actually violin with a lot of electronics uh, it's totally different and it's the journey like pre-pandemic beginning of pandemic how the pandemic happened how it affected people and then after pandemic what happened so it's uh, like um, one hour of music which depicts all this. You can really visualize that. That is one. And the other one is um, uh, Raga Seasons, which is an Indian violin concerto and a collaboration with uh, the strings, string orchestra. So that, that has six Raga, six movements, six seasons of India. So these both I want, I want to play in different places in India. That's my aim. So what cities in India you've seen uh, are more receptive to music and where you think music is really thriving? Chennai in South, the audiences are really good. I have not seen any any city in, anywhere where they come to concerts 7am in the morning. No, that you must have that yeah. 
real passion. Uh, seven seven thirty, we have people that's there. Then next, I think Bangalore is okay. Uh, but then if there are good TV serials, I've seen them. <laughs> Uh, no, no. Tomorrow I'll go for that for the other concert in the series. But today I have to watch this serial. That problem is there. Um, apart from that, Mumbai might be good. Yeah, but, but uh, London is awesome. I would say that is the place for any kind of music to try. Any world music, you go and sit some Greek music. Your audience, people, there. A lot, lot of value for uh, art and culture. That's that. But, and and also. Of all genres of music, not one particular genre. Mm. So that's that. That's great. I mean, that way, London is the best. Yeah. Talking about different genres, you even collaborated with foreign artists. Huh. So tell us about them. Who are the people you collaborated with? Oh uh, yeah, I have collaborated with Robert Atchison, who is the first violinist of Lion King Disney musical. So uh, normally Indian musicians collaborate with jazz musicians because that is improvisation. We also improvise. But then uh, I wanted to collaborate with a classical musician. But classical musicians, once the notation is off from their eyes, it's gone. So I wanted to. Collaborate with a rigid musician, and this project is called as Raga Garage, and we will be touring Europe next year. Actually, it's a very nice project. So it's it's like we have uh, termed this. The tagline is Union of Cultures. So that is Raga Garage. Then I have collaborated with the Bollywood brass band, but they're based. They're all white people based in London, and then brass. You know, huge this trumpet, trumpet, tuba, trombones. So it was a very challenging project for me. Because thirteen brass feet against one violin. Violin is a very soft instrument, so I had to work a lot of on my sound, electronics, processes. It was very important. But then I have this uh, um, now this raga seasons with the string orchestra. I did collaborate with the Mendelssohn Chamber Orchestra in Hungary, the Lithuanian Chamber Orchestra in Lithuania. Then I collaborated with the Swedish Crystal Quartet, string quartet. So that is. A project really very dear to my heart. Then I have I have also a collaboration with Balkan Jazz with Daphna Sade, who is an Israeli-based player. She lives in Bristol. So uh, these are just a few. And now I also collaborated with a Polish cellist who lives in Scotland, Justina Jablanska. That's violin cello duo. We are performing in New York in June. So I, it's a wide array of projects. Like, uh, and my though my forte is thematic music, I've ventured into all of this. And I like. I will look into more collaborations. And Nordic raga, ah, that is another excellent project. Nordic raga is a, a folk music of Nordic countries, and these are Swedish folk musicians. And then Swedish folk has is is very difficult, and it's uh, uh, odd time signatures, like seventeen beats, eleven beats. You know, the, our mind is tuned to two, four, eight, sixteen. But when you have to count seventeen or thirteen, it's you, you can't think normally. So they they have such interesting beats. So they are called as polskas, Swedish polskas. So that that collaboration I also allowed to do. And now uh, my this year's collaboration will be with uh, uh, Smash, who is a oud player, French oud player uh, from Paris, and he's also a DJ. So the problem project we have named as Sangamum. Uh, so the uh, French oud DJ, myself, and the tabla. Very contemporary songs. We are actually touring from twenty seventh. We were supposed to come to Hyderabad, but I don't know what's going to happen. I will, uh, in, in case that happens, I will inform you. <laughs> so, but when you're collaborating, you know, I mean, the creative, you know, you hear of people uh, having creative differences. Like, you have to be perfect. Yeah. So, how do you work that out and reach a middle ground where both of you agree? First, before co um, uh, collaborating, we have to go for a jam session. Within one minute, you will know whether my frequency and their frequency will match. Yeah, you will know. If it doesn't match, it is just not possible. Eh? It's no no use just trying. So uh, you will know when, whether how, how receptive they are, and with this kinetic knowledge, we'll be very what to say when it comes to mathematics of music or whatever, we'll be quite good. But we'll have to see that how it is, and you will know whether this will work or not. And then uh, come up with some song and see how it goes, and that's how it goes. You know, uh, for an artist, appreciation is very important. So, can you tell us something about your, the recognition that you have received? Um, that this is MBE, which is the member of the out of the British Empire, which is the third highest civilian award in UK. That was announced on uh, uh, King Charles' birthday. 
uh, in August, I think it was. And then when we got the news, I could believe it. Could believe it. it took almost one week for us to digest because a, a musician who had got this ad, uh, award was Adele, Ed Sheeran, these people, and some uh, footballers. And then as a uh, Carnatic musician, so I am recognized there outside. Uh, it, it, it was a big shock. I, I was I felt very much rewarded for my tireless efforts to. <laughs> Uh, promote music also. So you know, I have my festival, uh, London International Arts Festival, which I developed over a period of say uh, 11 years. So a uh, lot of musical promotion also went behind and uh, through my organization Dhruv Arts, um, I, uh, we have also supported orphans uh, in music teaching because you know one music lesson costs 500 rupees minimum, at least 8 lessons, that is 4000. There is so much of talent in India. And our orphans tell me, where do we get this 4,000? So we supported a few children, seven years for music scholarships, and one of them has become a performer now. So I felt so rewarded for all this work. And then the award was given out on 12th uh, December as an investiture ceremony in Windsor Castle by King Charles. And then I uh, had always gone to Windsor Castle like a visitor looking at the state rooms, all that. But I felt very special going as, <laughs> as a special guest. Yes, and I feel uh, I have more responsibility towards goals in music. That's nice. It's not only about my project and, and passing on something to the next generation and keeping the tra tradition alive. Yeah. That's very important. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So. Thank you. <laughs>